Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another show, another episode of Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, coming to you out of North Carolina. And if this is your first time on the show, a very, very special welcome to you. Whether you're viewing in on uh, YouTube or you're with us on iTunes or Google Play or wherever you're tuning in from, we're glad to have you. And if this is your first time to the show, we talk about everything that relates to real estate investing, single family houses, commercial, and don't go anywhere, folks, because today I've got a very, very special guest that's going to talk to you about a specific niche in this world of real estate investing. And I've never, ever had a guest that has talked about this subject before. I'm not going to tell you what it is yet, because first I got an announcement to give you. So in case you all are not familiar with me, I'm known as the private money authority and I work with real estate investors and get them plugged in for funding on their deals, regardless of what their hard money broker would say, or their mortgage broker or their banker. I'm all about working with real estate investors, getting funding for your deals without relying on banks. So before we jump into today's show, I've got a free online class, a free online class that I'm going to um, give you access to. So you can go check it out when we finish up with the show. And here it is, and I'm putting it right up on the screen right now. It's www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast, all one word, money podcast. That's J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money podcast. Get on over there to the URL after the show. And I'm going to show you the five steps on how to get funding for your deals without relying on the banks, regardless of your credit, your verification of income, or your experience in real estate investing. With that, let's move on to the show. So my guest today If you're watching on YouTube or any of the other video channels, uh, you can see his face, but we're going to keep him as Mr. X right now, the mystery man, until I tell you his name. He's trying to hide his face, but he can't hide. He's actually very, very well known all over the world. But let me tell you about this guy. First of all, he's a dear friend of mine. We're in a mastermind together, have been for, oh, about the past year and a half. And you talk about me having guests here on the show that comes from um, the perspective of being a servant and having a, a heart of giving. That's what this guy is all about. But let me tell you a little bit about it. I'll tell you his first name. His first name is Jack. Let me tell you about Jack. Jack is known as the land guy. All right. So he's an investor. He's an educator. He's a husband. He's a father. And here's what's really cool about Jack. He's all the way from Germany, and as hard as he has tried, he cannot get rid of the German accent yet. He's still got the German accent. But listen, folks, in 1997, Jack arrived here in the United States, and here's all he had. He had two suitcases and a bunch of student debt. Well, his wife, Michelle, and he have skyrocketed their business here in the States, Since 2002, they've been buying and selling lots, as in L-O-T-S, as in land, since 2002. And put your seatbelts on for this, folks. Since he and Michelle started investing here in the United States, they have now flipped more than 4,000 transactions since they started. In a short 18 months, they went from $0. Listen, folks, in a year and a half, Jack and Michelle went from $0.00 to over $1 million. So since that time, they've begun their own education company. They still do the business, but they have figured out this business to where it can be totally totally passive as well. We're talking land cash flow that's massive and it's consistent with checks coming in years and years and even decades after doing a, a transaction. Beyond the land business, Jack has got a portfolio of rental houses, commercial properties, and he's got large apartment buildings as well. But what he loves about, and what his students love as well, about the land and the lot business is there's no tenants, there's no toilets, there's no termites, there's no repairs, there's no inspections, there's no mold, and there's no contractors. In fact, every time I've been involved in the land business, I can relate to what Jack is talking about. 
He and Michelle are still flipping over 100 properties a year. And, you know, they've created the lifestyle. They're able to travel, you know, two to four months out of the year they spend traveling. They've got the lifestyle put together. He's a number one best-selling author. The name of his book is Forever Cash, Break the Earn, Spend Cycle, Take Charge of Your Life, and Build Everlasting Wealth. And he's got a very, very successful podcast as well that's titled Forever Cash Life Real Estate Podcast. Wow. So here's his last name. Welcome to the show. The one, the only, Mr. Jack Bosch. Welcome, Jack. Thank you very much. Whoa, I feel like humbled with his accolades here. That's uh, it's amazing. Thank you very much, Jay. Uh, well, I tell you, Jack, it's been great knowing you, getting to know you over the past year and a half uh, with the mastermind we're in. And it was great seeing you last week down in uh, Tampa. Well, Florida. Man, we had a great meeting last week, didn't we? We did. It was, a, was very, very good. I really love being part of that and love hanging out with all the with guys like you. Absolutely. Well, Jack, I'm just extra excited to have you on the show because, as I mentioned when we started out, I've never had a land expert on my show. And I'm, I'm excited. My lands, uh, I know you've had your show around longer than I, than, than, uh, I have, but this is episode and show number 103 that you're on with me. What are you up to now? One or 2,000 shows on your podcast? No, no, no. Mine is not that old. And in between, I actually stopped it for a couple of years. So I'm only up to episode. I don't even have, I think, 100 episodes. I have like 80 or 90 episodes so far. So do you actually charge ahead of me there, which is totally cool because I love, <laughs> I love your style. I love your I love what you, how you present what, the, the subject matters that you present. It's really a lot of well, fun. Well, I appreciate that. Well, I'll tell you, you know, before we started the show, I had you confirm I've got a cousin in Texas by marriage, my wife, Carol Joy. Many of my viewers and, and listeners know Carol Joy. Her first cousin in Texas, his first name is John. And John was talking to me about a year ago about how he uh, is so successful in this land flipping, land investing thing. And as a matter of fact, he told me that you are his mentor a year ago. And he told me just a few short months ago, he's already quit his day job. He was a very, very successful um, uh, principal in one of the main car retailers in Texas. And so he's now doing it full time. And John can't say enough of fantastic things about you and what you, and you know, not only you doing it, but you being a mentor to students as well that do the land business. Yeah, he's it's been great. It's been an action taker. He's even though he's had a very busy schedule, he's just started taking action. And I think it took him less than 15 months, I want to say 15, 16 months to go from not having done a deal at all to quitting his job and making a very nice, a very nice income that replaces his uh, prior very nice income that came with like 10, 12 hour shifts at, 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 the, at the car dealership there. Yeah, I remember him talking about that. Well, my viewers and listeners, they, they always enjoy hearing the backstory on people. So if I could ask you to give us the short version, I mean, you come from Germany. So what happened? I mean, what was going on? It was 1997. Of course, looking at your picture here, for those of you that can see the video, you must have been like seven years old in 1997. But anyway, exactly. what happened? What happened that got you from Germany to the United States? And I mean, you must have been really motivated to come over here with nothing but two suitcases and a lot of student debt. Well, you know, the reality is I actually came over to the U.S. because I wanted to just, I had the opportunity to finish to get like an American college degree and finish my German college degree because those two colleges were partners. So I never had planned to stay here for long term. I had never been to the U.S. before. It was kind of an adventure. The reason I came to the U.S. was that I really thought I would, I needed to improve my English because I was, I was brainwashed by the world, just like most people are brainwashed to want to do like get a good career, get a good education, get a good job, make a career, work until you're 65 and then retire and hopefully have enough to retire on. 
That was the plan that I was on because nobody in my family was on a different plan. My dad, my parents, my grandparents, everyone else was on that exact plan. There's no entrepreneur in my entire family except for my brother. But at that point of time, he wasn't an entrepreneur either. We kind of became entrepreneurs at the same time. I was closely aligned within a couple of years from each other. But, but other than that, everyone in our family has a job. So, so my goal was just, I wanted to do a career in Germany and I was working at a, as a company, as a, as a student worker, and that company was quite international. There was lots of people from America and from a India and from other people, uh, other places, and the language was English, and my English was really bad. Some people say it still is, right? But, no. <laughs> but uh, it was really bad, and I, I was like, if I want to make a career, I got to improve my English, and I saw the chance I could come to the U.S., I, I could do this, finish like the degree, and I had like to basically be like hit three birds in the bush, right? Or well, three birds in the hand or better in the bush, whatever you say that thing, right? <laughs> I, mean by that, right? So I was like, I'm getting an American degree. I finished my German degree and I learned English. Well, that's pretty cool. I add to my resume, I'm gonna be so in demand when I come home back to Germany. So I actually had my job lined up. I had everything lined up in Germany, but then I came here and I really started liking in the United States of America. And then I also met a girl who now is my wife of 18 years, or so going on 18 years. And we just we just fell in love with, the, with each other, with the US. Uh, we're like, you know what, let's give this a try. Let's stay here. Let's try to get a job here. And, and the rest is history. We, we got a job. We went through the green card process. We hated our jobs. But in the process, then we realized we got to do something else. We got to stand around two feet. And that's how we found real estate. And then it just, uh, then we just went from there. Well, to begin with, that's the beginning of a fascinating story. So let's push that a little bit further down the road. Tell us the part of the story as to, first of all, how you even got interested in this world of real estate investing. Did it start with land or did it start with something else? No, it didn't start with land. I, I got interested in it because I was working at a company that was that had grown a lot, but now it was shrinking again. So they were letting low, go of people left and right, and I was afraid to death of what would happen. Uh, so, so I, I worked twice as hard, tried to keep that job, successfully did. But while I could not, while I was working through the process of getting my permanent residency, my green card in the United States, and but I was also thinking. If I have my green card tomorrow, I have nowhere to go. I don't know anything else but this job. So I would end up being stuck in this job for years to come. So I said instead, you know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to learn something part-time on the side, even if it's midnight, even if it's the weekend, whatever it takes, because I was no longer willing to, to, to stand kind of the miserable life that I was living there by having to travel 100%, working until midnight, being kind of a slave of that company and just like didn't want to do it. So I, I started looking around. I looked for all kinds of stuff. And then literally one night I was watching an infomercial and I didn't buy their stuff. But the fact that it was like that they talked about real estate and making big checks and things like that caught my attention. And I was like, oh, well, let me look into this further. So I went, I went to the library and I bought some, some, some books based on it and, and, and ended up actually, I ended up buying something from that infomercial down the road because I keep seeing it. And it's like I bought like a smaller program from them. And that helped us with the documents and the stuff in there, helped us to our first deal. And that ended up being a land deal. And then the next end of that deal ended up being a land deal. And but, but we also failed in between. We, tried, we initially tried to do like wholesale deals on houses. And the thing is, when you come from another country, not only do you need to learn the language, but then real estate is its own language. Now you're going to talk about two by fours and two by eights and shingles and, uh, and, 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 and drywall. And I was like, what are you talking about drywall? This is not wet. This is dry, right? And, <laughs> And so, so you, uh, you had to learn all this terminology and then, then you talk, start talking about contractors and, and how much it costs to repair a bathroom, how much it costs to repair a kitchen. And I had no clue of all of that stuff. So I was scared to death. But then when I, once I came across land, I was like, this is it. Land is where I'm going stick to stick, stick to. And I started, we started just succeeding from then on and started doing deal after deal after deal. And, and life has 
uh, has never been the same since then. Yeah, it sounds like it. So, you know, you're you're the only part, and I've you know I've been doing this business for 15 years. I've been in the housing business all my life, and I've been a real estate investor for 15 years. And I've never heard of anybody else out there like yourself that's really known, you know, as the land guy. So how about take, uh, and I know there's really no such thing really as a hypothetical deal because every deal is different. You know, every deal's got different price points. Every So in your, in your biography, you talk about transactions, and you also talk about having passive income that can last for years or can last for de- uh, can last for decades. So tell us about that. Do you have some land deals where you make you know really good money right now, really fast? And do you have other types of land deals to where uh, it creates passive income? Can you tell us about that? And what's the difference between those two? Absolutely. So uh, we really focus on two kinds of land deals. We do, we, we do wholesale land, just like we, we basically do land deals like other people do house flips. We flip land like other people flip, land, flip houses just without the houses. Right? It's the same thing. It's just that the, that the exact method works different. The steps are different. But at the end of the day, we're looking for, for pieces of land that the owners no longer want. And there's a ton of them out there. Because to many owners, it's not usable. They're like, I don't have, I just pay property taxes. They don't want the properties anymore. They live a thousand miles away. They have to send the, somebody out to, to maintain it. They just don't want to have the piece of land. But at the same time, there's millions of people that want a piece of land to build their dream home on. They want a piece of land in the, in the path of growth, right? They want a piece of land to go out there hiking, camping, and, and, and have, a, have a fun time. So we're focusing on three kinds of pieces of land. Number one, it's infill lots, which are ready to be built on. Number two, it is land right in the outskirts of big cities, bigger cities. And number three, it's recreational land or 40 acre parcels or ranches, basically, where people with their RV can go out there, take their dirt bikes, take their, take their guns with them, put some cans out there, go to do some shooting, do some dirt biking, do some bonfire, bring several families out there, just have a blast. The first one is obviously easy to sell to the builders. The second one is easy to sell to financial investors who are looking to, if you're like three miles outside of a big city and the city is growing, well, guess what? Another 10 years from the, down the road, these properties that are, worth, that are now worth $30,000 are going to be worth $300,000. It's a great, great buy. Or also people that have a little bit lower financial means want to live outside of the city, but be close to the city. And then potentially live on something that's appreciating and actually have a decent lifestyle and, and something that goes up in value. So these are the three kinds of properties. But then how we deal with them is in two ways. Number one, we wholesale them just like house sellers wholesale houses. The only difference is because it's land, we actually never have to go see them because nobody has to open the door. There's no foundation issues. There's no mold issues. There's no roof issues. There's no AC issues. There's no contractor issues. There's no uh, squirrel somewhere issues. There's no plumbing issues. There's uh, no electric issues. There's no issues. There's nothing there. You can use Google Earth and Google Fa- Google uh, Google Maps to go see the property. I don't have to go physically out there. I can pinpoint them, give the give any buyer a GPS coordinates. They plug it right to the phone. They drive right up to the property. I don't have to show them. So it's completely hands off. Yeah, would you say this piece of the real estate investing world is easier to do virtually than, say, other kinds of real estate investing? Yes, yes, yes. So much easier. Because, I mean, we got students right now that are living in Germany and are doing deals in the United States. I got a guy in China doing deals in the United States. I got guys in Peru and Jamaica and Spain and in, in Australia, doing deals in the United States without ever having actually set foot in the United States. So because you can completely virtualize the business. And then when we sell them, we sell them in, uh, because what, the way we sell them is we sell them as a wholesale deal. So you take a property worth, a typical kind of deal is a property worth $25,000. So we're not also, that's the other thing, we're not focused on the multi-million dollar properties. We're usually focusing on the below $100,000 properties and your cousin is focusing, John, he's focusing on the below $200,000 properties. But usually it's like below the $100,000, $200,000 range and the most, most of the deals are below 100000 
So let's say you take a property worth 25, let's say $30,000. But because the owners live like a thousand miles away, they don't longer care. They only have to pay property taxes. They don't want that deal. They're willing to let these properties go for literally five to 25 cents on a dollar. I mean, that's reality. So they're, li- they're selling these properties for perhaps four grand. So you're taking a $30,000 property, buying it for four or putting on a contract for four. And if you sell this property for $16,000, are you going to, are you going to, is it going to sit on the market? No, it's going to sell quickly, right? Because it's a true wholesale deal at almost half price, but you're still making a $12,000 profit. Nice. Which coincidentally, most wholesalers that I know make an average wholesale profit on a house of like $10,000. Sometimes they make a $50,000 deal, but we sometimes get $50,000 deals too. Right? So it's the exact same profit margin without all the hassles. And the second way we sell a property, and that's about your cash flow point, is we actually selling the property with seller carry back with a seller financing. And that's just is the most amazing thing in the world because let's take that same deal. It's worth $30,000. You're putting on a contract for four. You now sell this to somebody with a 15%. You sell it at full market value because when you sell with seller financing, you don't have to discount the price because the deal is in the down payment, how much down and how much per month, right? So you sell it at $30,000 with a 15%, one five, 15% down payment, which is what? $4,500. But you paid only $4,000 for it, right? So you're getting what you paid for it right at the sale down and done. And by the way, the way you do that, the best way is when you have a, when you find a seller willing to sell a property for you for $4,000, you put on the contract, you keep it on the contract, you find the buyer and then we line both up. So at closing, you get $4,500 and you send $4,000 out. So it's a cashless transaction. You don't even need any money. You do a, 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 a double closing, basically. And now, say it's a simultaneous closing, It's a right? simultaneous closing. And now you've gotten the same what you paid for the property as a down payment. You have zero money out of pocket. And now they pay you $400 a month for the next eight years. Nice. Free cash flow. And most importantly, pure cash flow. Because there's no tenants, no toilets, no termites, no repairs, no plumbing, no broken, no broken stuff, no midnight move outs. It's just somebody who pays off a piece of land for the next eight years. It's pure cash flow. And that's, mm-hmm. that's the two ways that allows us to build up cash flow and allows you to get cash deals. Nice, nice. So just for the sake of all of our audience, the majority of my audience, Jack, knows what a wholesale deal is. Okay. But, but we will have a few uh, viewers and listeners here that might be a little fuzzy. So take a moment and just be very, very crystal clear. When you say wholesaling a piece of land, what does that mean? Okay. It means, in essence, buying super low, selling low. All right. So a property, again, worth $30,000. You you get a, you get a seller you, uh, to agree with you to buy the. The seller sells it to you for $4,000. So now you have the choice. At this price point, actually, our wholesaling sometimes is a little bit different than other people's wholesaling. The typical house wholesale is you have a $200,000 property. Somebody gives it to you for $120,000, and you go sell it for $130,000 or $140,000. To another real estate investor. Yeah, an investor. Exactly. Right. An investor buys it for $120,000, sells it to another investor for $140,000, who then goes rehabs it and goes sells it for full market value. Correct. What we do is the same thing, just with a smaller number, but the same margins. So we take a $30,000 property, we put it under contract with a seller. So this seller person A is willing to sell a $30,000 property to us for $4,000. It happens every day and every week, and we have that 4,000 deals like that. So now we have this property under contract. The close of escrow, when we need to buy this property, is, let's say, six months from now. We literally get a six months close of escrow. We don't have to buy in seven days or anything like that, which is cool if you can, but we like to have given time because these sellers, they have many times owned these properties for 20, 30 years. They don't care. Nobody sends them a letter because everyone runs after houses, right? There's nobody in this space. It's almost competition free. And so you go and it's set a, you get a contract for $4,000 close of escrow six months from now. Now you go market this property a week later, two weeks later, you find a buyer willing to pay this pay to willing willing to pay you fifteen thousand dollars for this property. Great, 
So now what you can do is you can assign the contract to them and make $11,000 in the process, or you can do what's called the simultaneous closing or double closing is that you, you, you have two contracts, a buying contract where you're buying and a selling contract where you're selling. You send both of these contracts to the title company. The title company will then take the buyer's $15,000, use that to pay the seller $4,000, keep a thousand or two thousand dollars for themselves and send the remaining nine or two thousand dollars to you. Beautiful. That's a simultaneous closing is going to be done. Now the reality is sometimes we get deals sometimes for two hundred dollars. Right? You get really? a, you get a piece of land for two hundred bucks. My two hundred bucks, is it worth for me to do all this stuff or can I just go close on it and then go sell it? Like one time we've gotten a hundred and ten properties for ten thousand dollars. My land. Land, individual lots. I mean, that makes a difference. It makes an average of $93, $91 a, a, a property. Wow. At that point, I just paid for them, right? I just bought them. Now I spent $10,000. I own 110 lots. And then we would sell them individually for between two and $5,000 each and make about three, $400,000 out of those $100,000, out of those $10,000. Wow. So it's, it's, it's the, I consider it is still a wholesale because, but it's a wholesale that actually yeah. bought the property first. Right. Yeah. In the housing business, we don't call it wholesale. We don't call it retail. We call it whole tail. Exactly. Yeah. And that would be a whole tail deal. Exactly. Because <laughs> exactly. you're, you're doing the dollars that would be attractive to a real estate investor, but it's actually an end user that right. is that's taking the property so jack i know uh i know my audience is dying to know the answer to a couple of questions sure go ahead first question is where in the world do you find these properties i mean they're like all over the country so how do you find them they're there that the only work this only works where there's land <laughs> So no, this works everywhere. I mean, it works, works. We have students doing deals in Wisconsin. We're doing, doing deals in New, New Jersey. We're doing deals in New York. Student deals in Florida and Texas and in Kentucky and then in, in New Mexico. And I mean, all 50 states, including Hawaii. I personally have done, my wife and I, we have done deals in 17 states, all going all the way from Hawaii to Florida. So not all states, but that's not because one state is better than the other. It's just because we only have so many hours in the day and so many deals that we can handle to do ourselves. But we have developed the exact method where you pick a county, particularly depending on what of these three kinds of properties you want to go after. If you want to go after infill lots, then go inside a growing city and send uh, and contact owners there. Right? We're right now, we're selling a lot. Literally yesterday, we got it on the contract that the property that we bought, we actually bought it, we own it. We paid five thousand dollars for it. We're selling it for sixty-three thousand dollars. What? With a with a three thousand dollar down payment and Ooh. a five to six hundred. We're still negotiating that the five to six hundred dollars a month monthly payment. So nice. we have our, all of our money back four months from now, and then everything else for the next probably about twenty years is just cash flow. Will net once you have the principal and interest included. Will net over a hundred thousand dollars on that deal. Wow, beautiful! And that's an infill lot. Somebody wants to go build a house on it, right? Yeah. So, so then depends on what. If you want to go in the outskirts of town, pick a growing city that is expanding. Google hundred fastest growing cities in the United States. And don't everyone pick number one. Pick number 11, 14, 17, 27, whatever it is. Pick a city, and then you go outside of that. You look for counties. The counties that are right outside of that. And those are the counties you then go and target. Or if you want rural areas, go out a couple of hours from a big city to some really beautiful rural area where the people in that city that want to escape from the weekend out of the smog and out of the noise and all of the stuff, the RV people, which is a multi-billion dollar industry, where they want to go take the RV and, and celebrate and have a great weekend. And you have a ready buyer, a ready buyer pool for all three kinds of properties. Beautiful. Beautiful. I love it. So... Is, you know, once you find, oh, my cousin, John, I was telling you about that's such a successful student of yours out in Texas. He was telling me that you've got this really, really like cool letter 
that you've taught him to mail out to landowners that really, really gets their attention and gets them to respond. Now, how easy or how hard is it once you find these properties to find a buyer? I mean, are you are your students or do you and Michelle find your buyers in the multiple listing service or do you have a way that you find other buyers? Uh, we, so we use a different way. We Unfortunately, you can't, if you don't own the property or if you're not an agent, you can't put it on the MLS. The MLS is pretty straight, multiple listing service is pretty strict on that. So we can't use the MLS unless, um, I guess in essence, you are you have a friend or an agent or something like that that can do it for you. But if you're just an investor and you, and, and the, and you just want to put the property out, you can't use that. But yes, we use a letter to send out to our, to our people, uh, to, the, to the people that we think are interested in that. We've developed a crit- set of criteria of, how, of who we think is interested in our, on, in our letter in selling the property. And our letter gets, uh, actually, that's another thing. Our letter gets a response rate that's usually between 4 and, and 15%, 4 and 15%, depending on which t- kind of these three markets you go after, these, these three kind of properties you go after. So I just, we just came back from a mastermind where a lot of successful house flippers are getting a below 1% response rate. So now I'm just like <laughs> snickering there because I'm getting a, a, a 6, 8, 10, 12, 15% response rate on an ongoing basis with our letter. And that's the same letter that John is using. And then on the selling side, what we use, we use a lot of, uh, of the different websites that are out there. We're using Craigslist, Zillow, a Redfin, but what is rocking everyone's boat right now is going like crazy is Facebook Marketplace. Yes, yes. Yeah. Same thing for me, Jack, in the single family house market, Facebook Marketplace. I mean, I'm talking as recent as six months ago, it's blown up. Yeah, and of exactly. course, you know, I've spent a bunch of money on Facebook ads, you know, for sellers and buyers. And the beautiful thing about Facebook Marketplace is it's free. F R E. You know, it's you completely free. Facebook, Zillow works well too. Um, and, and Craigslist, they putting they keep putting some hurdles in there, but uh, once you jump through them, it also provides very good responses. But uh, the big the one that works amazingly right now is Facebook Marketplace. One of our students last month put a property up for sale and literally in one day, he got 5,000 inquiries. My lands. That's like, obviously he priced that property too low because he ended up getting like 10 offers, but he made $24,000 on the deal. So it's a pretty good day in his life. <laughs> I imagine so. So, you know, I I know I have some of my audience that have not done their first real estate investing deal yet. So what are what are the main factors would you recommend from your experience? And you've been doing this many years. What are the main factors or considerations a new real estate investor should take into account before they enter the real estate, you know, investing market? Uh, well, they should be taken into consideration. I think whatever anyone does, you should take into consideration where you are in your own life right now. And basically know yourself and know yourself that if you know your own self with your own level of confidence, level of knowledge that you have, level of capability that you have in your life. And, 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 and if you're, are you guys that just like goes out and does a bunch of stuff or do you first need to understand everything? And depending on where that is, I would, I would recommend uh, a strategy that has uh, less moving pieces or a strategy that has more moving pieces. Like, for example, we are now, in addition to our land deals, are doing large apartment complexes. I would estimate that closing and managing a large apartment, when I mean large, we bought a hundred, an apartment complex with 146 units in Oklahoma just a couple of months ago. So when we, when, when the process of buying and managing that apartment complex is about 3.2 million times more complicated than doing a land deal, right? So I knew myself back then when we got started, if somebody would have come to me with an apartment complex deal back then, I would have run screaming the other way because I just was not ready from a knowledge point of view, understanding point of view, my own ability to even conceive that I could possibly tackle an $8 million deal. It's like, with just no way. I was little Jack that just came over from the United, from Germany that just gotten the job. That was just trying to make ends meet, right? That was who I felt I was back then. 
and I had to grow into a bigger role, now these deals is like, well, no problem, right? Now we're preparing to do like three to five a year and 15, 20 million dollar deals won't be a problem. But that wasn't my reality back then. So know yourself, know where you are. And if you're like a go-getter and you have already understand it, then go for the bigger complicated deals. If you're a beginner, if you don't know where to go, then, fig, then find something that is really, really simple. And that's what I had to do. I didn't know how much it cost to repair a kitchen. I didn't know how much it cost to repair a bathroom or retile a roof or fix a foundation. And in the first deal we actually got our hands on was a, was a house wholesale deal, a triplex. They had all of these things wrong. There's all of these things needed to replace. And luckily, we, we freaked out and we canceled the deal. We backed out of the deal because we would have lost our shirt on that deal. But on land deals, we don't have to deal with any of that, right? When you buy a piece of land for 400 bucks and it's worth 8,000, what's the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing that can happen is that you sell it to somebody for $2,000 and you make some money. And that's a good worst case scenario, right? The best case scenario is you sell it for eight, we sell a finance and get two down and and we make 15 out of the deal. So you pay 400, make $15,000. It's like, right? Crazy. But, but, but either way, you're not going to lose money. So what I say is like, start, just know yourself, know where you are, know where you are in life, where you know where you are in your time and the ability that you have to dedicate something. You want to do a rehab project, but you live a thousand miles away and it's your very first one. Get ready to write a big check and lose money on that deal. Yeah. Because it's just not going to happen that way. You got <clears throat> to be there. You got to do that. Now, is rehabbing remotely possible? Yes. But once you have the experience and the knowledge and the business, business experience, and you know how to structure these deals in a way that you can do it, everything is possible. It's just there's a right time and a right level of knowledge for everything. So we started in land because we knew absolutely nothing about real estate. And then we graduated and added additional things to that. But land is still our first love. Yeah. Well, Jack, you and Michelle have done over 4,000 transactions on land. You've got a ton of students that's done multiple thousands of, of transactions. So given all that experience, what is a realistic time frame? Let's say someone wants to learn how to do this land business, like, like you and Michelle do it. What's a realistic time period from starting to learn until they can actually make money? All right. So a realistic time for it is probably two, three, two and a half, two to two and a half months. Okay, uh, well that's fast. That yeah. And now I have seen it happen in two days, but that's the exception, right? Yeah. When our students saw our program, so bought our program, gotten uh, a deal on a contract that's that next day and sold it the following day. That wow. doesn't happen all the time, right? That's an exception. Right. Uh, I've also seen some people go for a year without doing anything, but then it's really their lack of action that's the reason why nothing has happened. That's right. So we just right now, we're, we're working with a couple from San Francisco. They started on January 23rd is the first time they opened the program. And on March 20th, so less than two months later, they got in a deal, which happens to be three lots with a mobile home and a barn on it with a built-in tenant that they're buying for $9,000 and the tenant pays, pays, five, pays $525 a month. So what they're doing on this deal is they're actually keeping it for the cash flow because again, they get, they get their money back in, in a year and a half on a deal or they're packaging and they're signing, they're re-signing the tenant to a long-term lease and then they're selling it to an investor as a lot lease because the tenant is not, not renting the mobile home. The tenant is only renting the land. So this is like a perfect tenant because if something breaks in his mobile home, we're not responsible. So they're selling it to a investor for probably forty thousand dollars. Wow! But That's even even the moment that they have it right now, they already have cash flow. It's like every month between now and the moment they sell it to an investor, they're making five hundred twenty-five dollars a month. So it's already started. Another one of our students has done sixty deals in the first six months. Wow! That's not necessarily normal either. But to get a deal from beginning to to finish in about two and a half months is very reasonable. If you don't, if you don't necessarily hurry, but you also don't take a week off here and there and, 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 and just don't do anything you want to do, be consistent, but then within two, three months, you should be able to get something done. Wow. That's fantastic. Well, Jack, my lands, the time has gone by. We're out of time for the show. And I know my audience wants to connect with you 
and learn more about what you've got going on. For those of you that want to learn, Jack and I, uh, Jack's got some, uh, some fantastic training videos and I'm gonna put the URL right up here on the screen right now for those of y'all that are watching on YouTube or any other video channels. And that's www. So to connect with Jack Bosch, go to www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash land, L-A-N-D, all in lowercase. So Jack, take a moment and, and tell the folks uh, what are some things and information that they'll learn by going to this uh, website that we just gave out. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So, well, there's, there's, uh, if you want to know more, there's obviously much more into that. There's the, the actual steps of how we go through what, what the letter is, how we go about this, why the sellers are selling, why the buyers are buying, why we can sell these properties very quickly online. All of this is explained there in a, in a certain, in, in, in a couple of videos or several videos. And so just go over there. It's free. Go check it out. You mentioned jconnor.com forward slash land, right? And uh, go check it out and just go in there and see how it is uh, like confirm for yourself how it works and whether that's something that, that you want to learn more about it. So as I said, there's, it's just free information, a bunch of free stuff in there. That's excellent. Well, Jack, I tell you, wow, it's been fascinating, fascinating and just so interesting to have you here on the show. And I just really appreciate you taking the time. I was going to say out of your busy schedule, well, you got the business automated. I don't know how busy you are, to tell you the truth, but I appreciate you taking the time to be on here. You've been a breath of fresh air. Thank you so much. Any parting comments for our audience? Thank you very much. Yes, our business is automated because the land part, is, you can automate about 80 to 90% of, of the land pieces. But in the meantime, we do additional things. And I love being that dad that uh, picks up his daughter from school. And I got to go out for lunch in a moment. And so it's, there's always things to do. But the parting comments would be just, again, it goes into the same thing. Just uh, don't be afraid of real estate. There's so many different ways to skin the cat. Just look at the kind of real estate that, that appeals to you the most, right? Because if you're doing something just to make money, it's going to get hard over time. And you're going to get, you're going to kind of like be worn out over time. But if you're doing something because you love it and you actually enjoy it and it's making you money, now you got a perfect combination that you can do for the rest of your life. That's what we found in land flipping or in real estate in general. I'm going to do real estate deals for the rest of my life, no matter what, because I just love them. No matter what the amount of money we made, I'm always going to do real estate deals. So I found a passion for myself that, end up, that as a side benefit makes a ton of money. Go find that for yourself. And if it's real estate, look around for different real estate methods. And, and once you find yours, just go full out, learn it, do whatever it takes to learn it. And then because if anyone else is successful in it, you can be successful in it. Because in Germany, we have a saying that says everyone cooks with water. What I mean by that is nobody uses a magic potion. To uh, Nobody has a magic potion in their life. Everyone has the same 24 hours. Everyone has the same thing. You gotta do, you've got to find the formula that you can follow to make it work. And if 10 other people have made it work, you can make it work. You just got to do what they have done. All right. The one and only Jack Bosch. Jack, thank you so much for joining me here on the show. Folks, get on over and learn more about what Jack is doing at www.jayconner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash land, L-A-N-D. Jack, thank you so much for being on. And to everyone, thank you for tuning in. If you're watching on iTunes, be sure to subscribe and rate and review. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure and subscribe so you don't miss out on any further episodes. Put your comments below. We'll get all of your questions answered as well. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, wishing you a fantastic day. And here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level. We'll see you on the next show. And bye for now.